So on behalf of the American Society of Dowsers, I am very pleased to introduce Tick Goudreau. He's a dowser teacher and author. He has been dowsing for longer than he cares to admit. He teaches dowsing. In fact, he's teaching the fundamentals course very often for us. But he fumbles with his words and says, ah, uh, a lot. But we love him anyway. He has written Spirit Rescue, a Dowser's Ghostly Encounters, and The Care and Treatment of Wild Energies, both of which are available at the ASD bookstore, aside from a lot of other things that he has also written that are not in the bookstore, and maybe he'll uh, mention them a little later, but he's an excellent teacher and speaker, and he's got all kinds of wonderful stories. And without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Tick Goodrow. Thank you. Oh, somebody's got, uh, Robert, you got Spirit Rescue there? Good, good. Well, congratulations. I hope you enjoy it. Um, welcome all. And uh, uh, thank you for the lovely introduction, Nidra. I appreciate it. Uh, tonight is the second part of our, uh, there's an uh right there. Second part of the uh, dowsing the human energy field that I wanted to put together for uh, for us all, and and uh, so people can understand more about the human energy field and how to douse it. And last time we did auras, that's why I was thrown aback by the auras uh, on the in the chat. It's actually it's it's chakras that we're going to be talking about today, and uh, when we get uh, going with the chakras, then then after that we'll we'll go on to other things uh, the next time around. I I don't know if if uh, uh, anybody has gotten their mail yet or or it's even gone out, but I would like you to uh, note that uh, we're looking for people for the board of trustees, and that if you would uh, be interested in nominating yourself or nominating somebody. Uh, send along the forms that will be coming out, send it along and uh, make our uh, ASD strong with lots of different ideas and lots of uh, people to help with our various programs that we're doing. So please, if, if you are inclined, please take care and do that. So we're going to talk about chakras today. Uh, first off, can everybody see me all right? Yes, no? Yes, okay, good. All right, and I appreciate that. Uh, the word chakra uh, is is uh, co comes from Sanskrit, like wheel, for instance, uh, and you know, like a round wheel, uh, and it, it's more more like a uh, actually more like a funnel that comes out from the body at different locations on the body. If you look at the, uh, I'm going to share my screen here, and uh, if you look at our first. Uh, where'd he go? You're not there. That's right. It'll only be a second. If we, we look at our uh, first image, we can see that they're, they're located around the body. Let me find another one here. Uh, up and down the body. Where's that other one? Oh, that's pretty good. Here, I'll take a look at this one. There we go. Uh, there, there are seven major ones, according to the thoughts, uh, starting at the uh, bottom of the trunk of the body, the base, sacral, uh, solar plexus, heart, throat, forehead, crown. Uh, these are all, a lot of people know this stuff already, so they don't really need uh, this information. There are a bunch of other ones, some minor chakras. Uh, here we see 21. Uh, an image showing 21 minor chakras. And um, then there are ones that, for instance, are just the, uh, uh, so some people say, and I, I never really had a chance to check it out. If somebody's interested, you could do that little experiment for yourself. Try to find out if, if the uh, points, the acupuncture points are chakras. Because I was working with the acupuncturist and uh, I got cured and I never went back. <laughs> well, she was kind of expensive and I didn't want, you know, well, paid a lot of money. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, I was going to work with her to see if we could, you know, I could, could douse the chakras to see if 
or not the chakras, the uh, acupuncture points to see if in fact they were little tiny ones. And if there was some way that you could find the meridians uh, along with that, uh, either by dowsing with them or, or uh, physically feeling for them on the human body. Now, I keep saying human body, but actually uh, chakras and, and the aura and things like that are also on, on non-human beings. And so whatever we learn about the chakras, we can also pick up from uh, uh, with our pets, our animals and things like that. The, there are two schools of thoughts for the chakras uh, that I'm aware, I mean, there are a bunch of different schools of thoughts, but one of them is that they, they follow the endocrine glands, uh, your, your uh, uh, the gonads, your, your pancreas, um, your heart, your, uh, yeah, thyroid, uh, oh, the adrenals, I forget the adrenals, and your pituitary. Uh, and this is sort of, and, and if you look at a, a, a diagram, it's sort of like the one that I have up here with, with this uh, person with uh, them staggered in the body as opposed to straight up and down because they're going over the organs. Uh, the, uh, one of the other general thoughts is that they're not, in fact, that they are uh, straight up and down, going along with the nerve plexi, starting with the base, going on up to the top, or with the brain being, you know, a big nerve plexi, uh, with the base at the sacral uh, area, and uh, w which is fine indeed, either way. However, I did find, happen to find this, and I thought that was kind of interesting, where we're seeing how the nerve plexi and the organs, the major organs are connected here. This is the easiest one to spot right here. It's your heart, your heart chakra, and there's your next uh, plexus for your uh, cardiac plexus, and your heart's going to be right there. So they're all connected anyway. It's, so it doesn't matter whether it's nerve plexi or endocrine glands or whatever they're all the same you know it's it's uh, it all works together and one of the other neat things is that uh, w when we talk about the hara and the uh, uh, hark lines the pingala and ida uh, along with the hark line we, we see that the chakras are also thought to have come from they're attached to the hark line uh, at the intersection of the ida and pingala that go up your body as a, like a kundalini, like, you know, talk about bringing a kundalini up. Uh, here, uh, this is an, in, this is a staff of Hermes. And a staff of Hermes is based upon this crossing this kundalini. Now, uh, here, here we see the, uh, again, the base, and then we see wherever each one, each one of these coils of snake, therefore, would be where a chakra was. Uh, and so that's kind of an interesting aside along with that. Let me just bring this back down here. Um, so those are, oh, this is a neat little guy right here with uh, showing tattoos and all these things. And, and there's, there's our little uh, chakras going straight up. Um, one of the uh, uh, chakra, uh, schools of thought, I guess, is like that each of the chakras has a different number of petals. If you notice, they're like a lotus flower with different number of petals. Uh, and uh, here we see the base chakra with four petals. Uh, I don't know what that is, six or something like that. It keeps on going up more and more and more petals up until you get to the, to the crown chakra at the head. Uh, if we look at the uh, images of the Buddha, very often you'll see him uh, with little spirals in his head. Uh, they, they might be curly hair, or they might be showing the vortices coming out of the 972 uh, vortices coming out of his crown chakra. So each one of these, and so we could actually douse each one of the 972 vortices in your chakra if you decide to want to do that and you want to spend some time. Uh, they call that the thousand uh, 
thousand petal lotus flower uh, with all the uh, chakras in it. Um, chakras are, are important to the human energy field because they connect. Let me just get this out of here for a second. Because they connect us um, to our energy fields. If, if you think about the aura as, as a, um, a way of communicating with the universe, and it's a way of also sharing some energy, the chakras bring energy into the body. They're like funnels, they're like cyclones that bring energy into the body and uh, uh, into the energy fields. Uh, and so the, the importance of having the chakras be balanced, uh, the proper shape uh, for your highest good. Now, these are all things for your highest good. Proper spin. We talk about colors of the chakras. Uh, we talk about the sounds. Some people can hear sounds of the chakra, chakras. And people talk about, uh, you know, they use the ascending scale, do, re, mi, fa. Uh, again, each one with their various sounds. Again, it's just, they don't have to have, there's no rule that says that one is do and re, mi based upon our scales. But uh, some people actually follow that and, and can hear the sounds of chakras uh, as, as well as seeing them. So that's kind of interesting thing. So what we want to do is make sure that they all uh, are in for our highest good. Again, that's the most important thing for our highest good. Uh, and so what we're looking at is uh, what, what can we say about our chakras? Are they properly, do they spin for our highest good? And if they don't spin for our highest good, how can we fix that? Do our chakras have the color for their highest good? Do they, are they shaped? Are they funnel shaped or they're damaged on the ends? Do they connect inside in our energy field or properly connected so that the energy that comes in the chakra is, is connected and coming in at, at full strength? Uh, is the uh, uh, shape of them? Now, are, they might be uh, uh, ragged at the end. Are they ragged and torn? Are they shaped like a like if you take a, a bell of a trumpet and smash it with a hammer, it's all bent over. You know, is it all bent over like a bell of a trumpet that's been smashed with a hammer? Uh, and these are things that we, we uh, would we'll be dowsing for with that. Uh, before we get started then with the actual dowsing of this, the, uh, if we uh, think about uh, some of the other ways of dowsing, and Barbara Brennan has a very interesting way, and if anybody's ever seen any of her stuff, Hands of Light uh, or Light Emerging, those are her two biggest, or her two books, actually. She, I, I think she's, you know, she teaches classes, or I don't know if she still does it, but she taught classes, and, but she only really had like two big books like a lot of people write books and books and books and books. She only did two, and I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, she said everything she needed to say in the two books and was done. But anyway, what she does is she takes her, her subject and puts them on a table, probably a massage table, and holds a pendulum over the top, uh, holds a pendulum over the top of them. Of course, Barbara uh, is, is uh, clairvoyant, and, and uh, so she can, she can see the auras, she can see chakras and things like that, but she'll lay the person over the top of the, uh, uh, you know, on the thing and put this over the top of one of the chakras and, and with a still pendulum and then watch how it goes. Now she has all these egg shaped wooden pendulums of different colors. And so for the root one, she'd use the red and the, um, sacral she'd use, or not sacral, uh, root, <laughs> sorry. I, I don't think very well when I'm uh, teaching, uh, but anyway, root and then the, uh, the base and, and the sacral and all you go on all the way up, uh, you just did different colors. So we have, uh, we start off with the root or, or put it on a heart. So you can do this at home. Find somebody uh, and take, take your pedal 
I'll put them on a table or, or uh, on the floor or on a couch or something like that with a still pendulum and just have it all over the top of it. Now, what, what it'll do is it'll spin, if you, if you ask it to obviously to spin in the direction of the rotation of the chakra, which is kind of neat. And it'll show, if, if you do for all, you show how, first off, the shape of the spin. Is the spin perfectly round? Oh, the direction too. I forgot that that's the first thing you'll notice the direction. So counterclockwise, clockwise. Uh, direction, the shape. Is it nice and round? Or is it egg shape, or is it kind of square shape? What's it look like when it, when uh, when you're doing that? And then we look at uh, uh, the the vigor of the spin. How fast does it spin? How strong is it? And is is uh, and so we get an idea of what happens. For instance, is it plugged? Is it <laughs> plugged or not? Not communi uh, communicating with the energy first. Uh, and that sort of thing. So we, we look at those aspects of it. And you can do that very nicely. It's kind of illustrative. I, I enjoy doing that. Uh, kind of illustrative and, and uh, people say, wow, that really works. Now again, what's in our highest good? And that's what we have to really worry about. What, what is in our highest good? And that's what we always ask. Um, so I, I use a pendulum a lot when I'm doing the uh, chakras. Uh, just because uh, that works best for me. Some people, uh, they love their L rods. The L rods give them a nice yes and no. There you go, <laughs> right over your head. Um, some people, uh, yes and no with the L rods. Some people uh, do a nice job with uh, uh, bobbers or even Y rods. They do a Y rod with, uh, I'm not sure how you do it on yourself, but uh, but I'm not a, you know, you could get yes, no answers with uh, the Y rod. So, um, so if we look on our handout that I have, let me share my screen again. Look at our handout. Come on, share you. And let's see, let's bring this down. Okay, and so we go down. Oh, here's the. Uh, Root sacral solar plexus heart, and again, this is this is kind of a. Uh, it's not really. Oh. Uh, it's not you know it, it's kind of suggesting, what these are you know one through seven again there are some people work with more than seven. Uh, I've heard of three below and three above, three that ground you to the earth, three that ground you to the heavens, uh, and. Uh, that, that's fine. You can do whatever, how it, whatever works well with you. And I'm not trying to, not trying to prescribe any kind of a, uh, uh, a system, per se. Uh, so we have our, our names of them of, of the basic seven. Anyway, one of the ones that I find that's very interesting that's not in this diagram here, is the high heart chakra. The high heart chakra, is the thymus gland. Uh, and that would be just between the uh, yeah, the heart and the um, this one right here, uh, thyroid. Between the heart and the thyroid, the high heart would be right about there with the thymus gland. And one of the things I find very interesting about that is it's, uh, I, I like to work with people who are suffering or have a, uh, issues of uh, immune system. So you get a whole cold or a virus or something like that. I always, first thing I do is go to the high heart chakra, see what's going on with that. Uh, same, well, I, you know, I do it with the thousand, but also do it with, with the other energy medicines, uh, you know, uh, Reiki or, or therapeutic touch uh, or any of the other ones that you want to choose. But you go to the high heart chakra, and very often you're going to see something going on there. You'll, you'll be able to tell whether it's it's uh, powerful enough, whether it's it's lost some of its pizzazz, and you can bring it up through dowsing. That's one of the nice things about dowsing. Uh, you can help to energize, and you're actually not doing it yourself, and that's a good thing. I'll talk about that in a minute or in a few minutes. Uh, let's see. So here's here's a number of vortices, like the 972 for the 
for the vortex of, of the head, like the Buddha. Uh, and each one of the, the chakras is uh, associated with part of uh, uh, psychological uh, survival, desire, blah, 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 resulting in grounding, sexuality, emotions, etc., and the colors. Now, again, the colors, they're all different. This one I stole, so I, I have nothing to, I, I can't say anything about it, but I, I don't like it because I, I, I uh, would, I believe that the crown chakra is white when I visualize the crown chakra. I always visualize it as white, uh, not violet. And uh, so that changes things. The, uh, with, the, with, for instance, the heart chakra being green, the high heart is pink. Uh, and then we go to the throat is blue. And then the brow is uh, your violet and then you get your white. Uh, metals, again, we're associated with metals and then quartz. Now, if, if we wanted to, we could go, this would do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. You know, that there would be sound you could associate with that. And if, if you worked with that sound or came up with sounds that way, you would be able to uh, make, make another uh, column over here, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, or, or whatever the frequency would be, you know, 256 hertz or, you know, for the various frequencies. Um, let's go down here. So we want to talk about dowsing for for the chakras, and we'll talk about the seven major chakras. Again, these are uh, you can deal with other ones, and we'll talk about the minor ones a little bit of it as we go along. And the first thing we want to know is we're asking when we we use our pebblum, we're asking uh, for. Let me stop sharing for just a moment. We're asking, uh, and I, I work with a what I call my dowsing system. My dowsing system is uh, that thing that that is greater than I. Uh, that's maybe part of me, uh, and it can be you know I, I think of it as spirit guides, guardian angels, uh, as part of my as part of my dowsing system. Some people use their higher self. Some some people use certain angels from Catholicism or or Jesus, or Mary, or something like that, or some other beings, that's fine. Whatever works for you. And then some people say, I don't need a dowsing system, I'm all by myself, and that's okay too. Because I'm not want any, you know, I don't want to change anybody's opinion about that. So we, we talk to our dowsing systems, and um, we, you know, what we really need to do first though, is make sure we have good yes and no answers. Uh, and so one of the things that you wanna do is with your dowsing tool is make sure that you get a consistent and a vital yes and no. And you just drill down through this thing. Now, it, checking your chakras for the first time might take a long time, but as you go on, as you've do it, done it once and you do it over and over and over again, it doesn't take very long at all. So for instance, the first question is, are the shapes of my chakras, major chakras proper as through one through nine below? Okay, and we'll, we'll get to those in just a second. Um, and so we, we uh, first one is uh, clear from stagnated energies, clear from holes and tears. Is it straight? Are the vortex roots uh, properly connected? Are the vortices cone-shaped and not wedged? In other words, the energy is flowing out properly. Do all the vortexes end or vortices end at the surface of the chakra? Uh, in other words, are they are some tucked in? Again, I, as one of the flowers, flower petals of the lotus curled up and not properly uh, uh, positioning itself. Uh, are all the colors of the chakra clean and bright? And I'm not saying which they should be, just that they're clear and bright. Uh, is the chakra rating vibra, vibrating with proper frequency? Is it, is it vibrating properly or is it, does it need to be boosted up some? And finally, are all the distortion, or all types of distortion for the blank chakra described? In other words, are there other things that I didn't even think about? Uh, for instance, uh, some chakras pick up thought forms. We talked about thought forms 
uh, with the aura, but sometimes a chakra will pick up a thought form. So that might come up in there. So we see that uh, there might be one of the chakras might have a thought form in it that's screwing things up. It might be an entity on it. Uh, we pick up an entity as well. Uh, so what we would do then is say uh, first, uh, and you know, just following with the uh, are all my chakras the shapes of all my chakras proper is one through one through nine below. So go ahead and give it a try. Are they all proper one through as per one through nine below? For me, they're, they're yes, but go ahead, you try it. Are they proper as per one through nine below? And you could all you could also ask me, I can I should I, you know, that's probably one of the things you should do, be looking at. Uh, may I can I should I douse for my chakras, but are all my chakras one through nine below? One of the other things, one of the other tricks that I do with, with uh, when I douse um, is not only do I ask douse, may I can I should I also ask on a scale of zero through ten, what is my overall effectiveness dowsing about? my chakras. So a scale of one through 10, what is my overall effectiveness of dowsing chakra? And so my pendulum's going over here to 10. Good. That means that I'm, I've got a 10 going on here, so I should be pretty good dowsing for it. All right, so did anybody just with a, just either raise your hand through your, uh, uh, through your reactions or just raise your hand waving at the screen? Did anybody have uh chakras all working proper as one through nine below yeah oh so, some of you good 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 all right and some of you did not is that correct the people who did not you can raise your hand did not get that oh good good okay i mean we'll get that square okay so um so we go to the na major chakra chakras, uh, and we start off at the root. And you start off, and you can do it on your own. You can do it right now. We'll do a couple of them here, and it's very very simple. Uh, is the shape of my root chakra proper? Okay, and so you douse that. Go ahead and douse. Is the shape of my root chakra proper? Okay, so see what it looks like for you. I'll give you a moment. Okay, and and anybody uh, uh, get a no? Anybody get a no? Is the shape of their root chakra proper? You got a no. Good. Okay. Um, all right, so then we'll just drag, drill down through it, the next one. All right, so uh, next we say, is my root chakra, here, let me go to the thing. You can see me, you don't need to see me waving my pendulum around. There we go. So we, is the shape of my root chakra proper? Is my root chakra clear from stagnated energies and issues. Okay, go ahead and give it a try. Is my root chakra clear, stagnated energies and issues? Uh, yes or no, you know, again. And then if, if that's a yes, then you try the next one. Is my chakra clear from tears? Yes. Keep on going down. Uh, so go ahead. Uh, let me put it back on gallery view. Stop my share, so I want to see the gallery here. Uh, anybody have, is my chakra clear from stagnated, stagnated energies and issues? Did anybody get that? No. Um, Laura, it, it, uh, it is not clear? Right, okay. All right, so if it's not clear of stagnated energies and issues, then you just jump down to the here. Can it, so I jump down here to um, 
jump down here. Ken, will you, I have spirit guides, guardian angels, or other dowsing partner, or your dowsing system. Clear stagnated energies and issues for me. And so you do that. Ken, will you, dowsing system. Clear stagnated, stagnated energies and issue for me. Yes. Okay. And then you say, all right, well, if it says yes, then please take the appropriate action indicating the progress with the motion of my pendulum or my dowsing tool or something like that. Basically, what you want to do is it's working. Uh, if, if for some reason they say, no, I'm not going to do that, then uh, why? Are there issues that you need to care for? So if, for instance, if my uh, root chakra is, is not uh, clear of stagnant energies and issues, is and, and you will not do it for, fix it for me, are there issues that I need to take care of for myself? Yes. And are there other reasons why they cannot repair the problem? No. Uh, are there karmic reasons? Oh, is it possible there's something karmic going on here that we're not sure about with the root chakra? So again, this is another thing that you'd look at. So um, go ahead and, and give it a, uh, a try. Uh, and one of the things that you could do then is as you go, you can fill in this little chart here. So with with the crown, the first question was, or, or, or we start at the root actually. Uh, first question was, are my is my uh, root chakra clear of uh, issues one through nine below? And then we look at you know one was, is my chakra. Uh, Clear from stagnant energies? Is it clear from tears? Is it the entire uh, chakra straight, et cetera, and keep on going? Again, these are all numbered on the chart. And all you have to do is, you know, put a little check. You know, okay, yes, no. And since if you've downloaded this thing, then you can print off another page and uh, write on it with a pen or a pencil. And uh, you can keep track of yourself over time. Uh, so you put the date up on top. Do I have that up there? Yeah, name, date. Uh, and if, if you're working with other people, you can put their names there and the date that you're working on. And if you need other comments here, that's cool. Uh, uh, Geraldine Lampert, raised your hand. Uh, would, would you unmute uh, Geraldine? Invite her to unmute. Um, Lidra? Hello, Lidra? I'll, I'll do it myself. Hang on. Where's Geraldine? Go ahead, Geraldine. Unmute yourself. Oh, hi. Hi. So one of the things I, so I worked a lot with the chakras and about a year ago, I started asking, um, uh, you know, if they were set right and stuff like that. And then I finally asked, because it didn't feel like it was set right. And then I asked a follow-up question <clears throat> that was, is my, whatever, solar plexus set as the way it was originally intended. Um, and I got a no, because I was getting, you know, is my solar plexus uh, fully charged up? Yes. Is it doing what it's supposed to do? Yep. But when I asked, literally, is it is it doing what it was originally intended? Like what, what God wanted to do in the first place? I got to know. And I was like, oh, wow. And I ended up with these crazy projects to clear that. And the reason why I bring that up is once again, uh, you know, you know, I was going along with the, you know, your guidance here, and I, I, I got again that uh, they were not as they were originally intended. So I did a whoosh whoosh to clear that, and now it's the way it was originally intended. It's pretty wild. Well, good, good. So you're able to fix that up. Yeah, now I was able to fix it. It was, it's just an interesting um, additional question that I had added in because something 
didn't something felt off it didn't like i was getting the answers that were saying yep it's fine yep it's in great shape yep well is this the way it was originally intended to be no what <laughs> I, like, wow. yeah. I got you yeah yeah, yeah. so no, that, you know so that that's another type of question that you could throw in there uh yeah. this this you can expand it to meet your own needs and the other thing is for your highest good see so uh is this the way for it needs to be for my highest good and uh so uh well that's a, that's a good thing thank you uh I, I don't know if there's anyone else here okay geraldine uh go ahead uh you're muted good okay so again for your highest good so now we go down to the next or go to the next chakra and just keep on going take a take a minute or so now robert Dick, there's also a question in the chat that number nine is not a yes or no question. And so how might somebody reword that? Number nine is a yes or no question. All types of distortion from the name chakra described by one through nine right above. Yeah or no? No? I know that it's just that's the question that's in the chat. So um, maybe we can ask Sandy if she'd like to clarify that. Sure, go ahead. Ask her to un unmute herself. I want to, in a second, uh, I'd like to get uh, Robert to unmute himself in a minute. Go ahead, Sandy, you can unmute now. Dang. <laughs> Says the host is not allowed. Oh, I can't see it. Oh, there you are. You're there. You're, you're unmuted. Hi. Good. Okay. So basically, when I'm reading it, Tick, it says, are all types of distortion for the, let's say, crown chakra described by one through eight above? Are okay. all they what? Or is there some all types of distortion. Are all types of distortion for the crown chakra described by one through eight above? In other words, are there any other yeah. things that, that, that we need no, to yeah. find, about, find out about, right? So are there yeah. any? Are there any other types of distortions? Right. So if it's not covered here, it would be an, a yes. There are other distortions, and if we yes. no, yeah. are they? Okay. So suppose. All right. Suppose then you got a a yes. I'm gonna uh, share my screen. Suppose then you got a uh, no. Oh uh, yes. There. Then you say, all right. Uh, what the tickets are uh correct any other type of distortion so are they no can you correct any other type of distortion to this chakra so if, if you got a so the, the question was uh are all types of distortion for the crown chakra described by one through eight above and if you got a no then you say okay can there be a distortion can you correct any other type of distortion to this chakra no got it okay <laughs> all right good thank you yeah uh, good uh robert yes you you went right through and you said you're clear one through nine you're all set ready to go right yes good uh, and uh so did you uh so you can go on if you want while while we're talking here while i'm still trying to help other folks you can go on if, if you care to just go down through that checklist and fill out your um uh, you know fill out the uh diagram <laughs> and uh and just go on through because then there's now so the next thing well let me let me stop for a second i'm going to meet you again robert and let you go about your business and uh, let me just stop the share here now for the folks that are still working on their chakras don't expect that you're going to some people it takes a long time to get through this thing and I'm not going to try to wait for everybody. And I wouldn't want to try to do it myself. I remember the first time I did it, you know, it takes hours 
to do it and you get tired and you you stop uh, uh, and and then you go on the next day or after you take a break or something like that and don't think that just because your your uh, your chakras are messed up that that you're there's anything bad you know you're here one of the nice things is that we can fix them uh, clear stagnated energies clear the tears fix the tears straighten the chakras uh, connect their roots and and these things for their highest good now we're, that's one of the things that's like kind of implied here but you could add it to the question or some for their highest good because that's what we want for their highest good uh, so if there's any questions continuing on with this i'd like to move on uh Somebody said, A.O. said, I don't have clarity for number nine also. Did that answer your question, A.O.? Did that answer your question? Elena, did that, did that take care of you? Yeah. All right, good, good. Thank you. Um, all right, so the next, the next thing is, um, what about, this uh then we go to the minor chakras and you can look at the different minor chakras and you can add as many as you think that there are so if if you think that there are 218 or whatever it is the acupuncture points i, I suppose you can ask about each one of them if you care to i don't know if i'd want to do all that that's an awful lot of work but you could ask about all of them and as a group in fact that's what i've got here are all my minor chakras working properly as one through nine below um, you know are are all my minor chakras uh working uh one through nine below uh properly yes okay so they're fine they're fine all the shapes are one through nine okay uh, and if yes go to remaining chakras if there's other ones like the acupuncture points, like the three above, three below, or wherever you want, just ask, you know, can and will you spirit guides, guardian angel, or, or are the shapes proper? Can you spirit guides or, or dowsing system, uh, clear stagnated energy, repair tears, just fix them all up. So what you're doing is you're not doing it. You're not using your energy to do it. And that's kind of an inter interesting thing because you're asking them to do it. And they're the ones that are there to help you. They want it. They want to help you. They want you to be well. They want your chakras to spin properly and for you to be at your highest and best for this particular uh, time in your incarnation. So uh, remember that uh, when you go through this stuff. Next thing that we have to do then is we want to go on because the shapes, now that's nice, spin. Everybody's worried about spin. Is my heart chakra meant to be clockwise or counterclockwise? I heard that your, your chakra is meant to spin once this clockwise, this is counterclockwise, this is clockwise, and if they're not right, then you're going to go, you hear all that stuff, and maybe that's true, you know what? But the best thing is, for my highest good, as you notice, that's a question, are all my major chakras spinning in the proper direction for my highest good? Are they all spinning in the proper direction for my highest good? And I get a yes. And uh, go ahead and ask yourself that same question. Are they all spinning for my highest good? Where is that? There it is. Uh, for my highest good. So go ahead and ask yourself. Ask, ask your dowsing system. And if they are, that's great. They go to your minors. If not, can we use spirit guides, guardian angels? Cause my root chakra, heart chakra, whatever, to spin in a proper direction for its highest good. Yes, please take the appropriate action. So always, uh, if if you find a problem, please take the appropriate action. Uh, indicating progress with the pendulum or wh whatever. If you're doing it with a L rod, then I, I suppose you use spin it or something. I don't know, but with a pendulum it spins uh, okay 
and all my minor chakras spinning in a proper direction for their highest good. Okay. Uh, and can I will you spirit guides, guardian angel, cause my minor chakras to spin the remaining chakras? Okay, so we keep on going. Anybody have any issues? There. Anybody have any issues there? No, everything going on? Good. And so if, if hey, if you're like, actually, if, yeah. Margarita has a question in the chat. All right. Why is it important to know the shape of chakras are proper, clear from tear, stagnated, straight? Um, it's the way it's the way they're meant to be. Uh, if if uh, if they're meant to be that way, I mean, if if it's your highest good that they <clears throat> are crooked and stagnated with energies, then that's that's okay if if that's the way it's meant to be, and it might be for your highest good, or it might be for this highest good and at your time of incarnation uh, of your incarnation might be highest good as a result of your karma. Uh, it might be, uh, there might almost be any reason why uh, they may not be straight or, or fixed and stagnated energies, all this stuff. But for the most part, uh, you want to have that so you get the proper energy going through you. So, so it increases your vitality. Okay. Uh, Margarita, did that answer your question? Yes, good, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, so we look at the spin. Now, everybody clear with the spin? Any problem with the spin? We have another question from Jane in the chat. How quickly might the chakras change? Right there, boom. Ask, ask your spirit guides and guardian angels or your dowsing system, whoever, will you spirit guides and guardian angels, uh, whatever you're doing. Fix, fix uh, tears of my, uh, um, yeah, fix tears of my root chakra. Yeah, okay, boom, do it. Please take the appropriate action, indicating the progress of the pendulum. Uh, and now, now you'll find if you're using a pendulum, uh, then you, it'll spin on its own. You don't have to, you know, I was spinning it, but you don't have to do that. Uh, how quickly might the IE revert back to negative? Okay, how quickly might they revert back to negative? Depends. Keep keep at it though. If you find that they're reverting back to negative, then you ask your, your dowsing system, what the heck's going on? You can't say that, you know, because they won't answer that way. But you say, oh, is there something I can do to keep this from going back to something that's not for my eyes? Good. Okay. Uh, Elena, you raise your hand. Yeah, could you unmute, uh, Elena? Can you unmute? Hello. That Elena? was hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, I had raised my hand that I was getting no on a lot of things because I'm fairly new, and then I just uh, put in the chat that I felt I've been dowsing a lot all day long in between appointments and i find that my energy field needs cleared which is not a chakra but uh like every 10 minutes i can clear it and then i'll get it okay it's clear and then i'll talk to somebody it's out of balance and needs cleared again so i'm just surprised how often it goes out of uh, balance can i can i may i say something please yeah please okay May I? Sure. Um, I, I, I enjoyed your presentation greatly. It gives me more things to think about. I've been um, um, working with the chakra for quite some time using dowsing. And I've, come up, I, I've noticed things that have been very interesting to me in, in my stuff that I do. And that is, um, as this woman just said, uh, you can help somebody to correct their chakra in st within seconds, right? Because you're you're talking about it and spending time on it, and yet as soon as they walk out the door, um, their chakra can go right back 
to to needing help again. Um, and I found that when I started uh, giving certain essential, allowing people to use essential oils um, that would um, help certain chakras, you know, certain essential oils are associated with certain chakras. And I said to them, um, it's up to you to keep it working at a number 10 because my scale is on a one to 10. And they'd laugh about it. And I'd say, no, I'm serious because your chakras are related to emotional issues. And as we can't play doctor, I would basically say to them, um, there's all these wonderful chakra books out there that have meditations and, and affirmations for each and every one of your chakras. And I, I had one and I would open up a page to one and they would go through the, the, they would look at the affirmations or the mantras or things that um, the health indications that each chakra is associated to. And I said, this is work for you to do because now you've got an emotional issue going on and if you can get into your meditation and start doing um, the certain meditations, affirmations, and self unconditional love of self, um, you can begin to repair it and begin to help yourself and your chakra function for its best and highest. And it seemed like the emotion was the key for each individual person, you know, because some people whose thyroids are out of balance have a, um, a hard time with speaking their voice, their true, their true self, their voice. And, and a lot of the times people say, oh my gosh, that's so true. So when you get any sort of chakra healing book and look up these mantras, these affirmations, these meditations, they can maybe begin to help themselves. Because I've noticed that if you don't work on this, they, 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 they start to not function well very quickly. I don't know. So Tick, what do you think about that? Well, I, I think that you might very well be right. Uh, I have found that uh, working with uh, just, just what I have here, what I presented works pretty well for me. Okay. Uh, All right. And so uh, you know, th there's, hey, you know, uh, there's a whole lot of stuff out there. Michelle Small, right with her, with her essential oils when she started all her, her essential oil works and flower essences. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing things that she does and uh, through homeopathy. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Elena. I appreciate that. And, and going back to uh, Elena's first question uh, was, you know, you're, you're, um, you're getting stagnated. You're getting, you're throughout the day. I, you, you know, it's possible that you're being tired that you're tired and so therefore your your uh your dowsing is going off uh i would say uh see what your energy level is find out what is my uh ability to douse about these questions and things like that do do some self-diagnosis on that how you know what is my dowsing going to do for me uh as from a scale of minus or zero to ten zero to ten what is all my overall effectiveness at this time should I, it is my highest good to be dowsing this information at this time. Maybe you're just wiped out. You shouldn't be asking your, these things right now. Uh, and if that's the case, do it some other time. Dick, okay. we, have a, we have another question by Jerika in the chat. And then there have been a couple of people who have asked, they're having trouble downloading your handout, whether it would be possible to contact you or whether that's going to be up on the AST website for them to download later. It'll be on the ASD website for them to download later. Uh, they they could get me at uh, uh, at my email. Uh, you have my ticket, email. Ticket there? ticket dowsers. Ticket dowsers. Yeah. They can okay, get I'll, me. I'll, I'll put that in the in the chat section, and then there's one more question from Jerika in the chat. Can anyone dows directly over your own chakra? Sure. sure. Um, <laughs> it it if. You, if you want to do it, you know, one of the problems that, that I came across with early on and, and, uh, and, and I try to not do this, when you, when you douse with a pendulum and you're seated, then your, all, all your chakras are going to get involved with this thing, okay? Uh, and your, 
you know, because you're seated if you're dowsing in front of you. Well, and, and one of the things I very often do is go off to the side so they're not affecting it. So uh, it, you could certainly, you can try doing it over, you know, try, I saw um, uh, Robert doing it over his head, for instance, you know, doing, dowsing overhead to get to see what the uh, uh, direction spin of his, of his uh, crown chakra was. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but just know that you might not get as good answers as you'd hope. Uh, if you're doing, if you do it over uh, an image of yourself or do it over this image, for instance. Uh, okay, so let's, let's see. Do it over this image. Uh, well, that one, you could do, do it over this image, for instance. Uh, you know, this chakra, the, that might be, uh, so is my root chakra? The question, you know, here's, here's a, here's an image of my root chakra. Is this image of root? It's like map dowsing almost, you know, you could do that almost like a map dowse because we're, we're, what we're doing is taking an image that's uh, a hologram, hologram of you. This is you, uh, and it's a hologram of you. And, uh, and so uh, it's, it has your essence. So you could actually, you can make a picture or a sketch and lay that on a table and do the Barbara Brennan thing with, uh, with the pendulum. And that'd be kind of cool too, I guess. I've never tried that. I just thought of that. Uh, okay, let me go back out of here. Oh uh, no, pertaining to spin, we did spin and shape, spin and energy flow does the energy flow through all my through my whatever chakra high heart heart properly balanced for my highest good if yes i'm finished no can it will you spirit guides guardian angels cause the flow of my energy of all my chakras be properly balanced for my highest good yes please take the appropriate action indicating the progress uh, with pendulum or whatever device I'm using. Uh, and the miner is the same thing. Uh, and I'm gonna stop sharing now. Okay, now some more questions. I use intent while seated, yes. Uh, Laura, yes. No, no. If 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 you think that's going to be a problem, then go ahead and do it. Otherwise, no. Uh, unless you got some specific. Some people wear uh, jewelry that that may or may not uh, have energy in them. You may have quartz or something like that. That might affect your energy. Uh, but but again, you're not uh, unless you're doing the holographic thing. Unless you're doing it. If you're sitting here saying, "Is my Root chakra working properly for my, you know, is it is it uh, one through nine below? Is it working fine? Yes. Then it's then you're not, you know, you're asking your spirit guides, your guardian angels, your dowsing system, is it working right? Uh, and it might be that that uh, uh, you're wearing a piece of energy jewelry or something like that that might not be, you know, might be wearing a uh, a quartz crystal over your thymus. Uh, and that might might be affecting, you know, is is my uh, high heart chakra working properly? No, uh, and and that goes in with the, are all the things. Again, that goes back to are all types of distortion for the high heart chakra described by one through eight above? If you if it's a no, then you say, can you correct them? And they might say no. No, I can't correct it. You got that stupid quartz around your neck, and it's affecting your thymus. So get it off of there. <laughs> you know, I mean, they can hear your spirit guide saying saying that now. Get it off of there, and it'll be fine, or not, or not. Okay. Uh, animals, yes, animal chakras, pretty much the same. Uh, you, you, uh, I know they have books on that. Actually, they have books on animal chakras 
Um, and so you could actually do it there. They tend to be not as, as big as ours, of course, because we're larger. Uh, but yeah, they, they have, uh, and, and even babies, infants, their, their chakras tend not to be, they tend to be smaller, uh, tend to be a little bit closed, more closed. Uh, and, and some people say, well, I don't, I, my chakra's closed. I'm not getting any energy through it at all. Well, that's not true. Uh, you are getting energy through it uh, and uh, just work with work with your group to figure out what's going on so are is the energy flowing through my chakra properly uh, for its highest good again for the highest good for my highest good so uh, okay Cindy Cindy Dales uh, LH Laura said uh, Cindy Dales books relates to animal energy and chakras includes diagrams okay good good so i know i know there's a lot of smart people out here that they can help uh, with with all these things um other questions other questions uh, uh, all right well um again take your time you can do it over. You can do it over a, a day, two days, or a month. But if you're, you know, a lot of people nowadays uh, are pretty, pretty smart about this stuff. You know, we in the ASD we're we're pretty clever, and we have been doing essential oils, and we've been doing energy work, and Reiki, and all these things that that uh, are good for our energy fields. And if our whole energy fields are balanced, then our chakras are going to be balanced as well. So certainly that's that's going to be uh, something that you can uh, expect and and hope for. And once you once you've done it, for instance, uh, Elena, you you mentioned that that you were having a little trouble with some of your chakras here and there. Once you've done it, once you've cleared yourself, once you've fixed it up, the next time you go through uh, and ask you know say you, you wait a week or so and you check yourself. You'll find that everything's pretty much back to normal. Every now and then one might pop out, but everything will be pretty well back to normal for your highest good. But check in. Use this thing to check in on yourself. Check in with with uh, your dowsing system. Check in with uh, 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 you know with, with your higher self or what, wherever you do with that, and see what your chakras look like. Okay. Um, Thanks for providing so many questions for use of the pendulum. Yes, uh, interesting with the, with the nice again going back to the dowsing system. You don't have to do the work. All you do is ask them to do it for you. And they say, yeah, 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 I can do it, I can do it. Uh, and it, it's kind of a neat thing that if if you're aware that that's what's going on and uh, that they're they're out there waiting to help you anytime you. I, I wish I'd remember that more often, actually, personally. So, do I open and close my energy ceremony to work on my chakras? Uh, Laura, uh, I I don't. I suppose if if you felt that that was necessary, you could uh, ask for protection. Uh, generally speaking. Um, you can do that. Ask for protection isn't a bad thing, but if you're working on your own self, then your own energies aren't going to be a problem. However, and you're having working with your your uh, dowsing system, then it's going to be a give and take, and there's going to be a problem. If you're working on somebody else, maybe maybe ask for protection. Sure. Uh, and you know there there's some I think with. Well, you you know you can come up with protection programs. I know when I talk about entities, I talk about protections. Uh, uh, you know, can and will you spirit guides uh, provide protection for me? And I have a little uh, uh, routine that goes. They go through a little dowsing program that they'll they'll uh, put white light around me and and uh, make a mirroring uh, uh, shield any sorts sorts of things that we put together uh, and you know you could look at protective uh, 
programs as you want. So uh, I don't particularly, when I'm working on myself, working on other people, I don't particularly do that because the, the provide protection is, is always there working in my field. So uh, it doesn't work a lot of times, <laughs> but that's just beside the point. Uh, questions? Questions? Okay. Well, thank you all very much for coming. I hope you got something out of this. Hope it was worth your hour and 10 minutes of, of time in, out of your lives. And I hope that you uh, get uh, to do some work with your chakras. And if you have any questions, uh, please uh, send me a, oh, geez, thanks. Send me a, uh, thanks, Laura. If you uh, send me a uh, question, if you have questions on uh, the dowsers.org uh, thing. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Lidra, do you have anything that you'd like to say? Lidra's asleep. <laughs> I'm going to stop the recording right now and I'll unmute everybody so that, no, it's just because the thing won't work. I'll unmute everybody that way they can say good night and uh, I'll stop the recording.